Oh. Okay, All right. Done. Yeah, as I say, lesson learned. It takes 30 seconds for it to get up to going, but. Wonderful. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, since we have established form, uh, may I have a um, uh, may I have a proposal that we approve the minutes for the December meeting? And I move that it's Sally. I move to um, approve the uh, minutes of the last meeting. Perfect. If you give your name, that it makes it easier for the secretary. So I have. Um, uh, I need a second on that. This is Karen. I'll second it. Okay, Karen has seconded. It's, it's been uh, moved and seconded. Uh, voting members only, please. Please uh, signify by raising your hand that you uh, approve of the minutes. Uh, and if you could raise, so if you go down on your screen, there's a little reaction and it says raise hand. And you see how it like pops up a, a little computer hand up there? That makes yeah. it a lot easier for us to kind of count all the things. So go to the, the bottom of your screen and among the choices in reaction, raise hand. I've just done it and you'll see, or you can put a thumbs up. I guess either one will work. Yep, I can see both right there. Okay. So, yes. Okay, all in favor? Okay. okay. And let me know when you've got them counted. I, I do, yep. Okay, and so we can great. go ahead and so, lower our hands. So now, everyone of you would please lower your hands or your thumbs up. Anyone who does not approve of the minutes, please raise your hand now or signify with a thumbs up. I see one. Maureen, unless. I, I think that was my mistake. I lowered her hand and then I think she raised it, so. All right. And then, uh, are you done with the no's? Yep, I'm done with no's. Okay. And then abstentions. If you abstain, which is within everyone's right, then uh, I, don't, uh, I don't, oh, I see one, Monique, and two, Michael Fumiati. Uh, Lieutenant Fumiati. All right. Okay, great. Okay, uh, so the minutes are approved. Um, there, there have been no changes in recent months of the treasurer's report. And uh, so we haven't been doing the approval of it because it really hasn't changed. Um, I think it'd be important to do that when, you know, when there are changes so that there's an acknowledgement of that, but to save time, we're, you know, every month, as long as it stays the same, we're not, uh, we're not approving. Okay, so we're moving on to the uh, New Haven Police Report. Uh, Lieutenant Fumiati, Happy New Year, and you have the floor, sir. Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, so uh, I just wanted to go over some stats for the for the entire year, and then uh, we'll take a look at the last month. Um, so in Fairhaven specifically, in the uh, in the last year, we had uh, there were four homicides, um, twenty one robberies with a firearm, uh, thirty other robberies, and so that's. Uh, in, so far in those cases, uh, we're seeing increases. There was a 100% increase in murders. Uh, we had two in 2020 and uh, a total of four in uh, 2021. Um, with robberies with a firearm, we had 21 uh, this past year and then 18 the previous year. Uh, so that's a 16% increase. Uh, other robberies, uh, which anytime anyone doesn't use a, a weapon, that's categorized as an other robbery. Usually that's um, anytime someone steals something and then uses force or threatens the use of force. And so we had 30 of those in Fairhaven. That's a 21% decrease from the previous year. Um, we had uh, a total of 21 people shot in the district, uh, 23 the previous year. Um, and then our aggravated assaults were almost exactly the same as well as the assault with the firearm victims. Um, that was aggravated assaults were uh, 70 this year. And uh, in 2020, they were, it was 74. Uh, an interesting thing about that stat is uh, unfortunately, as a result of during the pandemic, we saw increases obviously in shots fired, uh, but then also um, in domestic violence incidents. And so uh, both of those categories, when you see aggravated assaults, unfortunately that's usually um, in Fairhaven at least, 
Um, those are mostly individuals um, involved in uh, domestic violence incidents. Um, one of the things that we saw during the pandemic in Fairhaven specifically was a decrease in burglaries. Uh, so we saw a 30% decrease in burglaries in Fairhaven uh, from this year to the previous year, uh, with 47 uh, this year and 67 the previous year. Um, our motor vehicle thefts were down uh, from uh, 93 the previous year to 83 this year. And um, interestingly enough, over the last month, uh, Fairhaven has had zero uh, burglaries and also um, the motor vehicle thefts. There's only been four uh, in over the last month. And so that's sometimes we have weeks where we have six or seven. Um, and so th those numbers, that's very good. We haven't seen the same. The trend usually with uh, motor vehicle thefts, specifically in Fairhaven, um, are uh, delivery drivers, we were having an issue with uh, delivery drivers leaving vehicles running uh, or people warming up their vehicles or leaving vehicles running when they were running into stores or restaurants to pick something up quick. Um, that trend has subsided over the last month. Uh, additionally, we see uh, where the stolen vehicles are concerned, um, probably about 20 or more, 20 or 25 of the stolen vehicles that we had in Fairhaven were vehicles that were coded that way because of the U-Haul facility. And so whenever someone doesn't turn a U-Haul in, uh, after 10 days, I believe it is, uh, they report, U-Haul re will report a vehicle that uh, hasn't been turned in within 10 days past the due date, they'll report it as a stolen vehicle. And so our numbers are a little bit skewed where that's concerned, just where uh, where stolen vehicles are. Um, the biggest number, unfortunately, this year was uh, our um, confirmed shots fired. And so um, this year we had 60 incidents of uh, confirmed shots fired just in Fairhaven. Uh, that's up from 36 in 2020. Uh, this is a tough number for us um, for a number of reasons. But um, interestingly, we were going to see an increase in Fairhaven anyway because of the expansion of ShotSpotter. And so uh, over the last year or so, we've expanded ShotSpotter to cover more area. So it's really hard to tell um, as far as were we having those shots fired incidents in 2020, uh, and we just weren't getting reports of them. And now because we have the means to track them and, and hear them coming in and, and have us be notified without someone have to call in, um, we'll have to wait and see how the trend looks over the next couple of years to really kind of um, stabilize that particular stat category. Um, over the last to over the last month specifically uh, in Fairhaven, we've seen a, a pretty good reduction of crime. Um, unfortunately, we've had, um, we had uh, two people shot on uh, December 22nd, uh, just before 8.30 in the evening. Officers responded to uh, the intersection of Grand and Hamilton Street. Uh, when they arrived, they located uh, two individuals that were suffering from gunshot wounds. One was a gunshot wound to the head, the other was a gunshot wound to the left calf. Um, officers um, were able to um, stabilize the situation, call medical personnel. Medical personnel transported both those individuals to uh, the hospital where they were deemed to have non-life-threatening injuries, which is um, incredible, especially for the individual who was um, struck by gunfire in the head. One of the things that stuck out that unfortunately has been a trend in New Haven was uh, across the city is the amount of shots that were fired. Um, and so in this incident, 24 shells, uh, 24 rounds were fired. Um, that's pretty significant. Uh, in, in New Haven, we've seen more incidents where people are uh, carrying uh, firearms with uh, large capacity magazines. Um, a couple of months ago, I reported uh, that we had actually uh, obtained a ghost gun uh, from an individual that was arrested behind the Mill River Crossing uh, housing complex there. Um, he also was in possession of a ghost gun, which is a, uh, a gun that you can make online that has no uh, record of it. And uh, in that gun, he had an extended magazine with, 30, with a 30 round mag. Um, so that's capable of holding and firing with each pull of the trigger. Um, that individual can fi fire up to 30 rounds as fast as they can pull the trigger. And so, um, our officers have been working diligently to maintain a presence in those areas that have um, increases in gunfire. Um, for a while, it's been quiet over by the Mill River uh, Crossing Complex, and so we continue to monitor over there, um, as well as uh, we're working on, on what we can do with the Grand Cafe parking lot. Um, I sat there earlier today, and uh, there was about seven to ten people hanging out, and we're still looking at um, some ways to, to address that. Um, Ongoing in Fairhaven, uh, as a result of a bunch of the, um, the school threats, 
And so with the threat at Wilbur Cross and the threat um, with a bunch of a whole different, um, all the host of uh, New Haven public schools and private schools. Um, I checked in with all the schools at over the last month or so and uh, had officers check in at the locations. And so we're working with a couple of the different schools. Um, I did a couple of presentations to um, talk about bullying, internet safety, um, and kind of the importance of um, one, alerting uh, the proper authorities if there is concern for someone with a firearm, but then um, also not um, not just randomly posting on social media and certainly not uh, making up that there were people with firearms in schools. Um, we kind of emphasized that over the last um, couple of months in the schools, and I'm hoping that uh, as much as that was a, a, a terrible thing and incredibly frightening for a lot of the different um, teachers and students and parents, um, I'm hoping that we can establish um, some relationships or better work on our relationships in the schools um, to get officers into classrooms to um, read to kids, work on literacy, um, pretty much any way the schools want to, uh, we'd, we'd be happy to assist with that. So that's something we're, we're looking forward to moving with uh, in, in the coming uh, weeks and months this year. Otherwise, that's uh, all I have to report for everyone, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, any questions from the floor? Questions from the floor, please put them in the chat or raise your hands to be acknowledged. I do. If anyone sees or unmute yourself in case I don't see you. I see no questions at this time. I have a quick question. Oh, question. Lieutenant, do you know, uh, we're still waiting on the um, Grand Cafe Liquor Commission hearing outcome. Do you have any way to find out what's going on with that? I do. I can contact uh, Liquor Control and see what uh, if they can give me an update on the process going forward. Also, congratulations. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you to let me know and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to address them. That also gives me the chance to remind people that uh, Lieutenant Fumiati's phone number to text him at his cell phone is on our agenda as it is every month, as well as the non-emergency number for when you have an issue with, with, for the police, but it's not a 911 level call. There's a non-emergency number uh, that is on our agenda. Um, I um, I do not see Carmen Mendez, and I'm wondering. Yes, I'm if here. I'm, oh, oh, I'm here, oh. but I'm on the phone. Oh, perfect. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm Carmen. On the phone. I, okay, that's okay. Carmen, please. Uh, uh, first of all, happy new year to you, and uh, then secondly, would you would please give us your LCI report? Sure, absolutely. Happy new year to everyone there as well. I hope you're all well, and I hope that you all have a prosperous, healthy, and Wealthy New Year. Um, for this uh, month, I'll just go through a round of the streets that I've inspected so far. It's been Atwater, Peck, Lombard, Grand Avenue, Clinton Avenue, Maltby Street, Downing, Perkins, Front Street, Dover Street, Bailey, Lewis, Ferry, Pine, Clay, James, Lloyd, Chatham, Grafton, uh, and Mill River Streets. And in my rounds on those streets, um, I have 30 violations. So I will be very busy next week writing letters to all those uh, people on those streets that have violations on their properties. And uh, unless you have a question to ask me, I mean, that's basically the core of my report, my touring and my the violations that I have found. And mostly it's um, mostly it's it's trash stuff, uh, and some of it can be attributable attributable to the holidays. Uh, it's been really tough because people's uh, trash cans are overflowing, and there's lots of litter and debris. And then some people just continue to put bulk trash out, thinking that it's going to be picked up, and it's not, unless you call it in and make an appointment. Uh, but that's really the core of what I've been dealing with on these streets. And as I said, there are 30 violations in all. 
Thank you very much, Carmen. Uh, any questions from the floor regarding um, Carmen's report or any issue that you want to bring to her attention? Again, I'll remind you that you can communicate with her directly in the chat. You also have her number um, and her email address uh, on the agenda. I do not see any questions. As I say, you won't be able to chat with her just this month because she's called in, but oh. uh, the emails and stuff will still work. Yes, okay. absolutely. Anyone is welcome to email me or call me. Let me give you my number. It's 203-410-6527. And all the calls, even from my office, are channeled into this cell phone. So I get them all, and I'm always answering my phone. Abby was kind enough to put your number uh, in the chat. And again, it's on the agenda. Okay, I'm gonna move us along. So we're gonna go now to economic development update. And uh, we, we, ha we do have uh, Kathleen here from City Hall, but we're gonna start with Mark from Penn Globe because they've put in an interesting proposal to the state. Uh, and although it's not required, they have asked us for a letter of support for the proposal. Uh, some of you may remember Marsha Lefemini, I believe it's pronounced her last name. She's the uh, head of the company and she's been with us a couple of times, giving us a heads up that they were looking for space here in Fairhaven and planning to seek some funding. So Mark, um, the floor is yours to give us an update. Great. <clears throat> Thank you very much, everybody. Happy New Year. <coughs> Sorry. Um, my name is Mark Lawner. Uh, small correction there, Lee. I am not with Penn Globe. <coughs> Excuse me. No, no problem. Um, Marsha asked me to step in tonight because she's got another engagement. I am part of the working group, if you will, to pull this off for a uh, location in Fairhaven but I actually used to run another manufacturing company in New Haven. You may have heard of us, Electrics, we were over in the Hill and we employed a number of people from the city. I happen to know Marcia because she's my sister um, and both being in lighting <clears throat> and uh, both being in manufacturing, we got talking over this and she asked me if I'd be interested in getting involved with the project. So. Part of what I have done, I've been doing manufacturing for quite a while. Um, and what electrics used to do was manufacture uh, what they called industrial task lighting. And that's another component to this project. The project is currently being called Match. You may have heard that. I know Marcia came before you, gave you some initial concepts. And the idea is heavy on training, but actual real live manufacturing build a manufacturing facility, uh, currently location looking at Mill Street to build real life products, uh, both for finished goods, products to actually sell, employees to actually work there, and also contract manufacturing for other manufacturers in the region, sub-assemblies, components, finished goods, whatever, whatever is needed. Uh, and in actually doing real live manufacturing, train people to, to really work, not just pay lip service to training, but actually have them work, build products, learn manufacturing on the shop floor, and frankly, get a paycheck in the process of doing that. Again, facility is currently scheduled to be in Fairhaven area. Uh, we'll draw uh, employees and people to be trained from all over the region with a focus in the Fairhaven area. Bellsville, Met, Maryland, you and that. Sorry about that. Um, so currently the status is grants for both infrastructure and training are underway. And uh, we expect if all goes well to be operational later on this year. Any questions, comments? Not see any questions. So we uh, will be writing a general letter of support. Thank you. Uh, for this uh, project. Uh, this is not CDBG funding, so it doesn't require uh, a vote. 
but it's just uh, an acknowledgement of someone who wants to come into our neighborhood and create uh, jobs. This project is uh, very much supported by City Hall. Kathleen may want to comment on this uh, under uh, her um, report, informational report to us. And um, as a staff at the Community Foundation, I would be, would be remiss if I didn't tell you that the Community Foundation is also supporting this job, this uh, project that will bring uh, additional employment right into our neighborhood. With that said, uh, I would now like to turn it over to Kathleen for economic development information. Kathleen. Hi, everyone. The news I have uh, is their bridge is opening January 18th, the morning of, and that Carlos Zagare is coordinating um, some kind of opening. If everyone remembers, we had a, um, a fun party outside on the bridge when it closed. Uh, I'm guessing there'd be something similar that we could do outside safely uh, to mark the opening of the new bridge. Uh, and Lee, uh, Mike yeah, said- Lee, I, can, I can speak to that if you want. I, oh, I can please, speak to the bridge you. opening if you want. Please, yeah, so there's gonna be, so it was just finalized. The event is gonna happen on um, Saturday, September, September, January 15th from 12 to two. There's gonna be music and there's gonna be an opportunity for people to gather at both sides and then we'll open it up and let people walk across together. So it will be fun. Um, and there's plenty of space for people to spread out. Excellent. And we'll, so do you have the times at all for from that? From 12 oh. to two. So I'll two. put it in the chat, the flyer and Facebook event and all that will be out in the next day or two. So um, Saturday, January 15th from 12 to two. Wonderful. Uh, Lee, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's just the, there are a few other things that we know about and we're wondering if there's any update information, a uh, strong school building, English station, uh, anything on working with businesses uh, in Fairhaven or other relevant projects? I don't have new updates beyond what Mike had sent uh, in an email, uh, I think it was Monday. Um, he said uh, nothing new beyond uh, what's what's out there already for English Station and Strong School. I don't think there are any um, milestones either on either of those that are due right now. And I don't have anything new also about um, uh, business retention or, or attraction, if you will, but the city would like to hear from restaurants in particular, how they're feeling about um, this current state of COVID and also if businesses would consider what their thoughts are considering um, reviewing um, vaccine cards um, like some other cities have done. Um, the mask mandate, from what I understand, will, will stay for now. So it's not like a, an either or. And I think what we'll probably do is just send out um, our regular e-blast to restaurants uh, and survey them on, on their thoughts on this and see what other help they may need. There are still restaurants struggling financially. And while some programs have closed that are COVID support, um, I'm sure there are other ones uh, out there that we can connect people to if they need it. So that, that, that communication will be coming in, in some form in the near future. Great. Thank you very much. And I'll just point out, that not just other cities, uh, restaurants downtown, uh, I can think of bar, uh, pizza, uh, the pizza establishment on Crown, they're yep. checking IDs and I'm sure other restaurants are as well. Um, so uh, months ago, I did go door to door to the businesses on Grand Avenue with the intern that Carlos is working with, who a Yale student. And uh, if uh, there's interest in doing that again, we do want to keep all of our restaurants and all of our businesses. So anything we can do to, to help them or to help the city help them, uh, we would, you know, glad, I, I would gladly do that. I think other people um, could help as well. If you, you want to help uh, in any way with this. Uh, Let's, this yeah, we'll, we'll coordinate that with you because, uh, assist, because face-to-face -face is always the best way. Absolutely. That people, if they have a minute, they'll talk to you and you'll get, 
their real the real feeling on it um, because we don't have that right now. I have a few emails, like so, you know, sort of people who are just like very, very, very adamant about no masks. Um, no, we won't consider checking cards. Um, and then, uh, and a few, of course, you know, the other way saying, no, that's great. You know, I would definitely do that. Uh, Bar is 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 very seriously checking vaccine status. Uh, yes, and are. there was still a line to get into bar. Yeah. Yep. We need to give business. So they, they'll say positive. that it's not hurting their business. But I have other other retailers and restaurants that have that have emailed me recently and said, no, you know what? No, we're not. We don't like this. So we need to we need to we need to hear about it. That'd be great. Anything else or any questions from the floor? I said um, one other thing. So yeah. um, the outdoor seating in parking spaces in the right of way. Uh, restaurants can keep it there all winter and just have it set up and DPW will plow around it or shovel whatever they have to do to maintain that outdoor seating. All the restaurants know this. Um, and But if, if someone had pulled their stuff in and wants to put it back out, it is, it's not a problem. Great. Okay. Thank you very much for your report. Um, you. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, it's not on the agenda, but we do, we are fortunate enough to have Chief uh, uh, Alston, our uh, fire chief on, and um, you just want to give him a chance to just say hello and, and share some quick information. Chief. Hey, Mr. Cruz, thank you so much. Um, good evening, all. It's good to see you, uh, be it virtually. Um, we're, it looks like that we are starting to hunker down again with this new surge of uh, COVID. And so my thoughts and prayers personally are with you and professionally uh, to let you know that the fire department is still on the job. I know recently you've seen um, uh, talks and uh, presentations about our staffing levels in public safety, both with the police departments and fire departments. I'm very happy to report that on Monday morning, we were at 21% with 61 of our members off we are back down now with 41 members off at 13%, and we are trending down. So I'm very grateful for that. There has no, not been a change in service. Um, our folks are, unfortunately, are under stressful conditions because they know they're going into homes where people are positive. So please keep them in your thoughts. Um, but there has not been a, a reduction or a delay in service, nor have we had to cancel uh, any houses or close or brand out companies. So we're grateful for that. I'm going to put in the chat because I wasn't in your in your um, uh, agenda, and I just wanted to thank you for allowing me this short uh, portion. I'm going to put a couple of safety messages that are out there that I'd love for you to share with your team and uh, with the constituents in uh, Fair Haven. Uh, they have to do with winter safety. Um, we are starting to see an increase in fires. It's getting colder. People are trying to do makeshift heating uh, in their homes. We're starting to see an uptick in fires. Unfortunately, we did have a fatal fire uh, this past weekend uh, just off of Middletown Avenue, a, a gentleman who was staying in a camper, and that fire is still under investigation. But uh, in terms of the bridge opening, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm just so concerned right now that as it gets cold and as people are starting to stay home, we did see an uptick in fire incidents, cooking incidents. Uh, it's the holiday seasons. They're not over yet. Uh, today's epiphany. There are folks who are still lighting candles and incense. We ask you to not leave them around children, pets, or, or uh, adults with diminished capacity and or next to flammable materials. Um, I'll put our information up there. You can reach us at all times. Um, it's just good to see you. Good to see that you're still doing what you do. And Dr. Lagarde, thank you for all the support that Fairhaven Community Health Center has been giving the fire department since the inception of, and since the beginning of this pandemic. Uh, you and your staff have been phenomenal for us. And I'll put my contact information in there, Mr. Cruz. Thank you so much. It's good to see you all. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna move right back to our regular agenda. So we're shifting over from reports uh, to um, the part of our agenda that follows on the vision um, retreat time that we had a couple of years ago uh, when we were last uh, uh, together. So this is outlined, I apologize for that. 
This is outlined on our agenda. So we're gonna start uh, our vision in action with responsive, transparent government and economic and community development. So here uh, we're gonna have our report, our, our first report of uh, 2022 from our representative on the Civilian Review Board, uh, J. Juan Carter. For those of you that are new, the Civilian Review Board is reviewing the actions of the police department. As civilians, they provide uh, input. And uh, I'm just gonna turn it over now to, um, I'm gonna turn it over to J. Juan and he's gonna render his report. J. Juan Carter, you have the floor. Happy New Year's and uh, good evening to everyone. Thank you, Lee Cruz. Uh, uh, so with my report, um, it comes in there. We, we meet every fourth Monday um, of the month and we've been meeting virtually. Um, they did try to do a joint meeting or a hybrid, but um, with the way things has been going, um, it looks like we're gonna continue to do virtual meetings. Um, anyone is able to attend, um, when we have executive session um, is when the public does, do not have access to that part of the meeting, um, but they will be able to have access after we get out of executive session. And um, it's very um, rare that we do have an executive session, um, but they do happen when it's time for us to actually um, vote upon uh, a specific part of a case or we have to talk about a specific part of a case. Um, for December, we did not meet regarding the uh, entire body. We had like a special session. Um, what's happening is uh, there's a particular case that's going on in which uh, uh, there's going to be further investigation with getting fact finding and information. Um, and we were actually in the process of selecting uh, an attorney, um, more of a private investigator to get the information out. Um, so that way we are able to actually vote upon this particular case because the information that we have gotten um, is not um, enough for us to actually have a critical um, vote. Now, this upcoming month, um, there has been um, numerous reports that have, numerous complaints that have did come in. Um, we received these complaints via email uh, within a day or two when they're filed. Um, as of right now, I could recall maybe five or seven. Um, and that's between after Thanksgiving to now. And um, we will be discussing these events up on this next meeting and we'll probably be assigned who will be further looking into them with the joint committees. As of right now, I'm not part of a joint committee um, to look at or to review a case, uh, but I will be selecting one this upcoming meeting. Um, for, for right now, uh, I only been a part of one committee and we took a vote on that two months ago. And regarding, I guess regarding everybody else, um, everybody take turns on the committees they are, they are part of because we don't want to own, overwhelm the, um, the board itself. Now what happens is when we're part of a joint committee, um, we take the time out within three weeks to somehow come up with a meeting we, where we, we have the ability to go downtown and review the case. And then that give us the opportunity to actually um, give us our facts to the entire board, which will allow us to actually vote. So for right now, I don't have anything for no particulars for January or December because we didn't meet, but we will have a next one in the next two weeks, which I'll provide that link to um, the chair for anyone who would like to join. Very much, Jaywan. Um, any questions from the floor regarding Jaywan's report? Just looking through. If, if you have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself, or you can write it in the chat, or you can write directly to Jaywan and ask him a question you don't want to bring up uh, in front of folks in general. I see no questions. Thank you very much, Jaywan for your report. And moving on now to a more economic uh, focused um, uh, pre presentation and request uh, regarding CDBG support, uh, letter of support. Uh, Carolyn, happy new year and 
you have the floor. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. My name is Caroline, and I'm one of the co-directors of Collab. Thank you so much to the Fairhaven CNC for inviting me. I know you all had three questions prepped for me, so I'll go through um, each of those and then happy to answer any questions. Um, so your all's first question was, what work are we doing or planning to do in Fairhaven, and how does our work align with your all's uh, amazing mission? Um, so again, um, I'm one of the co-directors of Collab. We were really honored to receive a letter of support from you all, the Fairhaven CMT, uh, last year for our CDBG grant. And so excited to share our progress and what we're hoping to do next year. Um, for those that don't know, Collab's an organization that supports individuals in using entrepreneurship to build wealth for themselves and their families, create local jobs, and really support the communities they love with a focus on people of color and women entrepreneurs. And I really love the Fairhaven CMT mission. Um, specifically, I think our work to support small businesses aligns with the part of your mission that talks about sustainable community development, economic opportunity, and community-based partnerships in Fairhaven. Um, and with the support of you all and others um, in this last year, we're proud to say that our graduates officially hit uh, $5 million in collective revenue generated and $2 million in funding raised. That's, you know, that's dollars that become paychecks uh, saved in bank accounts. Um, food on the table, gifts for loved ones, and value that really stays here in New Haven. I'll put um, our website and our most recent impact report in the chat so you all can take a look at that. Um, the second question was, what is the amount of our CDBG request and what's it specifically for this year? So, you know, our real goal and heartbeat as an organization is to make sure that every single entrepreneur in New Haven um, has the opportunities to take risks, fail safely, uh, and really support the neighborhoods they love. And so this year, we have a similar request to last year. We're requesting the support of $60,000 from CDBG for two specific things. One, services for program accessibility for entrepreneurs. It really matters to us to provide a lot of wraparound services to make sure our programs are accessible. So this is things like Zoom access for virtual programming, office hours for one-on-one -on -one support pre-program, and interpretation and translation so that every entrepreneur can be successful while they're working with us, as well as childcare. And then two, staff support for our entrepreneurship programs and coaching. We take a really high touch approach to our work. Um, this includes things like workshops, access to pro bono support, but also weekly one-on-one -on -one coaching for entrepreneurs while in the program. And then the last question is beyond providing a letter of support, what are other ways that needy attendees can support um, our work? I really love this question. Thank you for asking. We're really proud of the ventures connected to Fairhaven that we've had the privilege of working with, um, such as Peels and Wheels Composting, founded by Domingo Medina and the Tortilleria Samia by the Samia Collective. Um, we really enjoy event partnerships. Um, for example, in this last year, we worked with Junta during one of their pop-up clinics uh, to do one-on-one -on -one pop-up coaching during the clinic. That was fantastic. Um, we worked with the Fairhaven branch and Junta to do an immigrants and entrepreneurship panel. That was a few years ago. We love doing those. We'd love to do more. Um, and then lastly, we just love your support in spreading the word. We say a lot that we're built off a foundation of relationships. It's amazing that it's a Thursday night and there are almost 50 people on this call. We'd love your support in just spreading the word um, about our program so as many entrepreneurs know about it. Beautiful, thank you very much. Um, any quick questions that people want to ask Carolyn uh, before I uh, turn it over to Adam to explain what comes next? Any questions? I don't see any. See no questions. Okay. I just want to remind folks that this is the first of what will be a series of presentations uh, over the next uh, couple of months um, that require a vote uh, so that we can send a letter of support for the CDBG process. And here to explain exactly how we're gonna do that is our vice chair, uh, Adam. Adam, take it away. Yep. So I am right now going to send a link in the chat. Uh, if you are a voting member, uh, you can go to that link and go ahead and just give your name, give a yes, no, explain or abstain. I will share my screen real quick. Um, all right, so this is what the vote, it's real simple this time. Uh, sometimes we have multiple votes, but this month we've only got the one. So if you could uh, just give your name so we know that you're a, a voting member, uh, say yes, no, or abstain to supporting uh, Collab's CDBG grant. 
Um, and so if we get you know, enough yeses, we'll go ahead and send that uh, letter of support. And it's pretty simple this time. Um, if anyone has any questions or you have any difficulty with getting the form filled out or anything like that, or if you want to see if you're a voting member, I can also send that. Um, I'll send that in a second in the chat. But uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to message me. And please fill that out before next Thursday, because that's when the deadline for our count will be. And yes, thank you. Adam, uh, thank you. I want to thank you uh, in front of everyone for all the work that you're doing in the background to make this meeting possible, including making these very easy to use links. So you'll see a link right there from Adam for voting and to see if you're a voting member. And you can open those and leave them open on your computer, continue to participate in the meeting, and then go back to them right after the meeting uh, finishes. Uh, I'll also point out that Chief Alston has uh, put in the chat a PDF on uh, dryer safety tips, and um, you can download that directly onto, the, onto your computer, again, leaving it for viewing later on. Okay, so moving right along here, uh, thank you again, uh, Carolyn, and uh, we're going to move now to the health uh, area, and we're going to start with uh, Dr. Sulagard. Uh, the director of our local Fairhaven Community Health Center. Uh, Sue, please take it away. Thanks. Thanks very much, Lee. Good evening, everybody. I just want to take a few minutes to update this group on where we stand in Fairhaven vis-a-vis -vis, um, um, testing and vaccinations. So uh, I don't think it's a secret to anyone that the whole country, certainly the state and definitely Fairhaven are in the midst of a very significant surge of COVID. Um, the good news is for those folks who are fully vaccinated, including a booster, uh, if they do are unfortunate enough to get infected, the overwhelming majority of those folks have relatively minor disease, um, not, not, not exclusively, but certainly the majority. We at Fairhaven Community Healthcare have been testing uh, in the community. We, we, we obviously did it all throughout the pandemic. It was a little respite at the end of June when our contract with the state ended. Uh, things were also looking a little more optimistic at that point. So, but by the end of August, it was clear that there was a need once again in Fairhaven to, to resume testing. And so we did that. So we've been testing literally every day, well, Monday through Friday, um, nine to roughly one o'clock, depending on ish, you know, circumstances, uh, since the end of August. It was pretty, you know, not there was not a huge demand, but we were there for the folks, for folks when they needed us. Uh, since Thanksgiving, that demand has absolutely skyrocketed, literally exponentially. Uh, like everyone else, we are uh, looking at staff shortages. So the combination of staff shortages and then some of the staff getting sick themselves, it's been a challenge to, to meet the demand of the community, even though we're trying our very hardest. So we are still out there. I, I wanna just wanna give you some staggering and sobering statistics. So the week, last week, which was the week leading up to New Year's Day, so Friday was the holiday, so we were, we were testing Monday through Thursday. Those four days, we tested 1,022 people, uh, and the positivity rate for those four days uh, at our site on Grand Avenue was 44.7%. So any of you who are following the state numbers, those numbers are in the low 20s. So we're talking literally double that of the state. Um, and part of the challenge is the state sponsored sites are rather limited. In New Haven, there are two. One is on Long Wharf and is accessible by car only. The other is on the green with hours, three hours a day at this point in time. Uh, so, we recognize that we need to be out there testing, and I just want to assure everybody that we are doing our utmost to, to try to meet the need, but even though we know we, we're, not, we're not meeting fully the need. In parallel with that, uh, we've been working for literally several months with our federal agency called HRSA 
to get testing kits like everybody else. We, we, we have had difficulty accessing them. Last week, we were very, we were so excited. We actually got our first shipment. We got 1,350 kits, two kits, two tests per kit. So 2,700 tests. Thanks to a number of people on this call and others in the community, uh, we were able to distribute, you know, it's not a huge number, but nevertheless, we wanted to get them out to, to, to you. And through a number of people on the call, we, I think we succeeded in doing a, a reasonable job at that. We held on to a number of those kits. And so for instance, today, we, you know, if you, if you drive by our, our, our clinic in the morning, you'll see people lining up very early to get a test. Again, our capacity to test is limited. We've asked the state for help. They claim they are unable to help us. Uh, so we do, we're doing our best. But today when we could not do any more with our staff, we then went out and handed out kits. So today we did 100 in-person uh, tests and then for people still in line, we handed out another 100 kits. Um, our hope is to continue to test to the extent that we can. We were supposed to get another uh, shipment of 1,350 kits. We thought we would get it today. We did not. Our fingers are crossed that we will get them tomorrow. And the really exciting news is that next week, we believe we're going to get four times that amount. We think we're going to get four times 1,350 kits. Um, that's what the feds are telling us. That's what we've asked for. That's the max we can get. And that's, and that's what we um, uh, are hoping for. And again, our goal is to keep our community as tested and as safe as we can. Um, um, that's, that's the testing side of things. Uh, on the vaccinating side of things, we've been vaccinating. We vaccinate every day. And I just want to urge everyone, please, um, if, if you're due for a vaccine, whether it's a first dose, a second dose, a third dose because you're immunocompromised or a booster, please, uh, easiest if you call and make an appointment, but if you want to just walk up, the odds are pretty good we'll be able to accommodate you in the moment. Um, and we're urging, you know, to get the word out. And all of this, by the way, all of this testing, whatever, is completely free of charge. There, there's no cost to you. We might ask for your insurance information if you have insurance, but un under no circumstances is there ever a cost to you. Um, I, I want to remind people that um, the, uh, the CDC, the FDA and the CDC just this week uh, approved giving boosters to those now 12 and over. So those of you with teenagers, if you're six months past their second dose, please bring them in so we can boost them. We know that the current virus, uh, to, for you to have really good protection, you need to be boosted. Um, I'm trying to see if there is anything else I am missing. Um, if anybody, <laughs> I'll just say that if anybody has any basic computer skills uh, and is looking for a job, uh, like everybody else, we're really uh, in a position where uh, we're seeing a lot of staff shortages. So you can go to our website, www.fhchc.org, and you can look at the jobs that were posted there, and you can apply right on the spot. And, we love giving jobs to people in Fairhaven. That's one of the favorite things we, we, we do. Um, I think that's it, Lee, unless there are some questions. I, I don't, um, I think I've touched upon those things that I want to touch upon. Great, Sue. Um, any questions uh, of uh, Dr. Lagarde? Um, please put them in the chat or unmute yourself. Um, I'm looking, I do, I do not see any questions. Um, yeah, oh, yes. there's, there's one from Liz. Hi, good evening. Um, first and foremost, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you, um, Dr. Lagarde, for uh, everything that you're doing and the staff. Uh, I was just had a little, I'm kind of concerned because I live right behind that, um, the, the testing site. So I'm noticing that people are lining up as early as 6 a.m. now. And um, I'm, I'm just, I, I get worried about people, you know, being exposed to the elements and, and I, I'm just wondering if the city, uh, I know you mentioned the state wasn't um, being very helpful with, with things, um, if they were planning on trying to do something a little bit different because it's, um, 
kind of concerning to see people not being able to social distance properly in the parking lot over there is very, um, doesn't allow to, to, to have like a lot of space and cars coming in and out and everything. Um, so I wasn't, I was wondering, I was hoping, because I, I saw your uh, Facebook Live that you did with New Haven Independent, I believe it was yesterday, uh, an interview that you did. Uh, you touched a little bit upon that. I was wondering if, if there was gonna be any reinforcements to try to help you guys out more to address those issues. In short, in short, we're trying very hard and people on this call, Alder Miller, uh, others, uh, me, our, you know, our representatives, uh, Senator Looney, Senator, uh, Representative Paolillo, Condelaria, they've all been working on trying to get us some assistance uh, through the, mainly through the state. Um, thus far, no, we have, we do have a guard who we've put on that, we hired a, a, another guard for the time of the uh, the testing. The problem is, is what time do we get out there? I mean, people are, you're right. People are out there as early as 6 a.m., even though we do not open till 9 a.m. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. But the guard knows to try to keep social distancing. That's one of the goals. We, we have encountered some instances of hostility, not unique to us. Uh, we're hearing that from throughout the state because, again, everybody is really, um, uh, clearly the state, the country, it did not prepare well. Uh, we're, we're not in a good position um, in with, with testing right now. Uh, I think if there's some optimism uh, from a medical perspective, if we look at what happened in South Africa and now then what happened in the United Kingdom, uh, this should go on for maybe another couple of weeks and then it should get better fairly quickly. So unlike the last time, um uh it's things are there's a there i think there's a light at the end of this tunnel in the, in the relative short term we just got to get ourselves through this period safely uh but i hear you and, and uh just today i was talking with our our security team to say do we need a third person out there and maybe if we do that we we bring in somebody earlier in the morning uh you know stagger the hours because um I, you know, I, I agree with you. I worry about social distancing. I worry, but with, you know, the, here's, the, here's my dilemma, right? So we know that we can't meet the need, but we're doing our best. Uh, the, what they're doing on this, the city green right now is three hours a day. And so they're doing 75 tests by appointment, 75 walk-ups, and that's it. You know, with a, a positivity rate that we're seeing of nearly 45%, I certainly don't want to encourage our, our residents. I, I mean, it's up to them, but I worry about them getting on, if they have to get on a bus to get to the green, then, and, and, and if half of them are positive, then what does that mean in terms of, you know, um, public health uh, concerns? So we're, we're, we're truly doing our best. Um, uh, my goal is hopefully these test kits will come tomorrow. They didn't come today. Uh, and that anybody who comes, if we can't do the PCR, the test, which actually takes now several days, so it's not even that idea, but some people need that for return to work um, or for travel. Uh, but um, if we can get those kits in, and particularly next week, if we get four times the amount, at a minimum, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll be able to give, that we'll be able to test via one or the other modality. But I, I, I hear you, and I, and I, and I, you know oh no thank you i don't like i don't blame you it's just I, I get frustrated with the state that they're doing this to the people they claim they care about so um i i really do applaud all the work that you you guys are doing because i, I when i look outside i'm like oh my goodness you know at least i'm, I'm very excited people are going out there to get tested and everything however at the same time you know seeing little babies or little kids and, and all that and just any age just out there like that exposed to the elements, no matter whether it's winter or summer, it's just very concerning to me. And I know that you and your team are doing the very best that you can. I really do appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question in the chat from Jennifer. How many people or what percentage of the people of the residents of Fairhaven are vaccinated? Do we have a number for that? I, I, I do not. I, 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 I do not have those numbers. I, I don't know. the the. We could certainly calculate the number of residents of Fairhaven who we have vaccinated, but we don't have the data of people who get vaccinated elsewhere. So I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I think, I think we, you know, we 
I think there's been a very good response. I mean, when I look at, you know, the people who just come to get vaccinated, I know that a lot are, are from Fairhaven, some are from beyond, but um, so I, I don't have those numbers. I don't know that anybody has those numbers. I mean, the, the state has those numbers if they wanted to sort of, you know, slice and dice, but they're not certainly not publishing that. If the, if the city does have city numbers, the yes, totals yes. that you all provide. So yes, that, we have you know city that. numbers for sure. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gard. We appreciate uh, your think, work and the work of your entire yeah, staff. Yeah, there's one more question. Oh. Yeah, one more question from Darlene, I believe. Hi, can, oh, can you hear me? Am I off mute? Yep, can you yep, hear me? Yep, um, can hear yeah, me. I just wanted to add, I was down at the Green today volunteering. We were They were doing testing and handing out kits. And there, was, there were lots of, we handed out a lot of both. I had to leave to come to this meeting, but if people can get to the green, I think they're going to do it again. And it's it was really quick. There were there were lines of people, but we went through them really quickly. So if it's hard to get to the clinic or they don't have enough, you can also go to the green. I think they were also giving them out at the um, I call it the racetrack. What's the name of it? Sports Haven. Sports Haven. Yeah. It was a little. Uh nuts with some of the driving styles of people trying to get in but it wasn't yeah, the green hard. the green is a little more accessible because you park and walk up and i gave out a ton of kits and they were doing the saliva tests on the other side so if they do it again which they said they would i don't know when but i encourage people to do that it was very quick and orderly as we get information we'll be sharing it and i know sarah uh, is sharing through the network for Ward 14. So, you know, if you get information that you know to be accurate, please share it. Uh, earlier today, yeah. I heard from my, my friend Andrew that he was in that line over at Sports Haven. And from when he got in line in the car to when he got his kit, although the line was very long, 10 minutes. Yeah. So it is working. It's it's long, and it, but, but, you know, some things are working. So. No, it was very quick on the green because no cars, you know, you have to park, but walking up and we were handing them out really fast and people were very appreciative. I never got so many thank yous in my life. It was wonderful. <laughs> Great. Um, Kathleen from um, uh, Economic Development did put uh, in our chat the link for the city's uh, COVID-19 page. Uh, so if you want to see those numbers for the city. Um, and uh, Liz is also commenting that uh, the green was super quick. Okay, so speaking of quick, let's move right along. Um, so uh, actually, if we could uh, have the uh, secretary uh, uh, correct the um, agenda, I'm just noticing it says uh, Fairhaven Community Health Center and then a separate point uh, for COVID testing. That is in fact one point. And then the following point after that is uh, it says Chatham Square at Mary Wade. I believe that's Chatham Place at uh, Mary Wade. And the speaker is uh, David Hunter. Uh, so David, uh, you have the floor. Oh, just need to unmute yourself, David. Sorry, hi everybody. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lagarde, for that report. Um, with respect to COVID, uh, we just received a, a governor's order around 3 o'clock, 3.30 today, uh, that all uh, nursing home, assisted living, residential care employees will be, have received their, um, their booster, their vaccine booster by uh, February 11th. Uh, so that's that's coming up on us. I think I, I don't I don't have the numbers with our staff as far as the boosters because it, the booster comes I believe it's six six months after the second the second vaccine. So you know it's it that's how it works. Every day we're we're giving vaccines or boosters uh, to residents and or staff for, uh, as a as a result of that. Um, and so I, I I don't know if there's anything else. I mean we've had some some outbreaks at Mary Wade. Uh, the symptoms are not as significant as they were two years ago. I think Dr. Lagarde may have covered that. Um, quarantines are different. Um, there's new information uh, that we're dealing with again, and it, which is constant between 
CMS, CDC, DPH, and you know we're we're monitoring all of those uh, those guidelines with respect to uh, where we are with with this uh, particular COVID strand. So, uh, and, and, uh, residents have been fine. We've had a few uh, residents as a primarily as a result of um, holiday visitation. You know, there's no restriction on on uh, visitors at Mary at, in, in nursing homes in our state. And uh, so, uh, you know, there were a couple of residents whose family refused booster shots for their residents who received uh, numerous visits over the Christmas holiday and who in fact have, have, uh, have the COVID now as a result of those visits. So it's a little frustrating. Not that I'm, I, I would not like to see a ban again on uh, family visits that I'm not, I'm not saying that at all, but um, just, you know, we're different than we were two years ago, for sure. And um, I think we're all tired of this, but I think we're very much uh, more experienced and knowledgeable about things. And um, so you have to be safe, stay healthy, drink fluids, get some rest and be good to yourself. Um, I think I was supposed to talk about Chatham Place at Mary Wade Home. We're so excited about it. Um, if you'd like a visit and a tour, please give us a call. And you know, we'd be glad to show you around. Uh, this would be a good time. You know, we haven't opened to the public yet. We have between I think 20 and 25 uh, deposits. Uh, there are two rooms. Two of our apartments already have um, uh, uh, furniture in them because uh, the the applicants have sold their their houses already and needed a place to move their furniture in. So they're they're in a Chatham place at this at this time. And they were just waiting uh, to come in. What we're waiting for is uh, an inspection by the Department of Public Health. Uh, that it is necessary for them to do a final uh, visit, on-site visit, uh, in order to approve uh, the home care portion, the home care piece of the assisted living. The building itself is not um, is not being inspected, but the the nursing service is being. And so that, that's what we're waiting for. We're hoping they come in next week. Our application has been in. It's been, you know, it's, it's completed and all the, all the documents are in there. So as, as soon as we get the state uh, health department to come in, unfortunately, they're dealing with what we've all been talking about, uh, the COVID outbreaks. And so they're busy and they have other, other issues that are going on um, uh, at the department. Uh, so we're hoping to get them out next week. And then we're really hoping to start uh, move-ins uh, around the 17th of January. So uh, the only thing that I think the major thing that you'll see uh, happening is uh, a fence that'll go around uh, the building on the front side and, and on Grafton and Pine, we're waiting for those uh, to come in. Um, let me think, we have, I think we have currently about 10 employees working for us. Uh, believe it or not, we've had, we had over a hundred applicants um, uh, for positions in uh, Chatham Place, which was we're very happy about, um, and so we have uh, an interim executive director whose name is Michael O'Brien. He's a really really nice guy. Uh, he's been in uh, the healthcare field for many years. He started out in hospital administration at St. Raphael's, so he's familiar to to New Haven. He actually met. A, a nice nurse at, in New Haven and married her and had children and, and they're uh, so he, he has a fondness for for uh, New Haven and he's really loving Fairhaven he came in as an interim and I think we're going to have him for a couple of years I think he, he's really grown attached to Mary Wade and, and the neighborhood and um, he's really excited to be with us and and open open up Chatham Place um, and we also have uh, a maintenance director uh, we have uh, a director of nursing in place. We have we've made some a couple of promotions, which I'm really happy about from Mary Wade. Uh, people who have been with us uh, for many years, you probably um, know them uh, through the clowns at our at our community parade. That that happens to be a family who works for us. And, uh, they're very energetic and very talented and. Uh, so we, we've made uh, one of those, or it will be the director of um, activities in, in this program. So we expect to be hiring anywhere between 50 and 60 uh, new employees uh, for Chatham Place once we get up and running. I mean, it's going to be going to take time to get 
you know, we figure it's going to take about a year, year and a half to um, to get to get filled with you know all 84 units. But um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll probably be employing between 50 and 60 folks uh, to do that. We are, as Dr. Lagarde uh, stated, also that uh, we are also looking for uh, new employees at Mary Wade. Uh, we're in need of nurses and certified nursing assistants and uh, program directors as well. And um, uh, we have an incredible staff. You know, you, you, you probably you know, know that you know, how hard they've been working. I know uh, the neighbors that have visited us uh, during the height of COVID you know, know and, and respect uh, the work that they're doing. And I, I can tell you that you know, we're understaffed and we're, un, you know, we're under stressful circumstances. I have to tell you, it's been over a year and a half since we've had a workers' compensation claim, which really is a credit to uh, these folks that work with us. You know, really truly mission driven and care about what they're doing. Well, the residents are taking care of and the families that they're, they're also caring for. So, um, you know, really, it's always I'm so proud to be, uh, you know, part of our team at Mary Wade and what we're doing in the community with respect to caring for older folks and and their families. So, probably longer than I should have taken. I'm sorry. Thank but, you very much for that report, David. A any questions uh, from the floor? Any questions for David? Not seeing any. Before moving to the next point on the agenda, I just want to publicly acknowledge uh, and thank uh, David and the Mary Waits home and Lisa uh, Hopkins in particular, their development director. Uh, some of you may have noticed that she is now our reporting secretary. And this is uh, an expression of the commitment uh, that uh, nonprofits like the Mary Wade home have uh, for our commitment, as does the staff of the Fairhaven Health Clinic out there above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, we have both uh, the, uh, the CEO and executive directors of those agencies. We thank you for your service, for the service of your staff, and for everything that you do, not just a part of, as part of your work, but again, above and, and, and uh, beyond. And uh, in, in, in the case of uh, our recording secretary, specifically, Lisa, thank you for uh, your service in that area. Well, okay. we, we particularly care about you too. You know, I, I personally care tremendously about our neighbors and, and, and the concerns of our community and do it every we can to support, support, you know, Fairhaven as a community. Thank you for that. Okay, moving right along, we're going to go now to the area of art and culture. And the only report there we have is from Kirk uh, Morrison, our uh, library manager here in Fairhaven. Kirk, uh, you have the floor. Hello, um, hello everyone. Um, we are open. Um, just want to make sure um, some, there's, I guess, some rumors going around that uh, that might not be the case, but uh, we are here. And because we are here, I will have to get it out of here very quickly. Um, I'm sure patrons must be wondering where I am. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, we um, the the one thing, uh, unfortunately, with the with the rise in uh, COVID cases and hospitalizations, we've been asked to scale back on um, on gatherings, and so it will probably be uh, quite some time before we uh, will be able to look. Uh, at potentially hosting you guys again in person. Um, we did uh, set it up uh, for folks to watch here um, for anyone who can't get here on Zoom, uh, but we had no takers. Uh, so we'll have to look and see if this is worth uh, trying again until uh, we can really have everyone back. Uh, but um, but the, the last um, big event that we did here um, was, um, uh, what I really want to do is spread the word about the Unite CT program. That's uh, something that's uh, been going on for income eligible people uh, who have had financial hardship due to, uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, it allows them an opportunity to um, uh, receive assistance on rent uh, and, um, ut and or utilities and for both tenants and landlords can apply uh, for this program. The first time that we hosted it here in Fairhaven, 
I think we had more people show up here than the rest of the library system combined. Um, probably at least 50 people who came to that. Um, and then the one that we had uh, the last week of December, we had about 30 plus people come. Um, so unfortunately, um, given, given uh, our, our uh, guidance on, on uh, gatherings, we might not be able to um, uh, host one of these again uh, for the foreseeable future. But uh, in the chat session, I will put in the information about how you can, um, if you know someone who uh, could benefit from that, how they can apply. And there are two service providers in uh, New Haven that will help you with an application. You do have to make an appointment with them though. Um, and those are uh, NeighborWorks uh, right here in, on Grand Ave uh, is one, and the other one is the Urban League. Uh, but I will, uh, I will put that information up on, on there and hope to see you guys soon. Take care. Thank you very much, Kurt, for that report. Uh, any quick questions before uh, Kirk has to jump off? While we're looking for any questions, I'll point out that careers at Mary Wade Home, as well as career opportunities at the Health Center have been posted the, the, the uh, web page where you can exactly find those. So uh, those are on the in the chat as well as the website specifically uh, that explains about Chatham Place, the new building that the Mary Wade Home is in the process of opening up. Okay, so with that and not seeing any questions, then we're gonna go right to the Alder reports. And uh, we wanna acknowledge, uh, we know at least that Alder Kupo is with us uh, or she was <laughs> with us. Um, Alder Kupo, um, if you're still on, you wanna take the floor and tell us anything you wanna share? Thank you, Lee. Uh, hello everyone, happy new year. Um, I wanted to let folks know, um, you may have heard that we're going to get some snow tomorrow. Um, so just so people know, a parking ban is going to go into effect tonight at midnight. Um, I'm going to put a link in the chat to an email I just sent that has a bunch of different locations for folks to park. Um, any, any New Haven Public Schools um, school parking lot is open and free to you have know, residents and Yale has offered a cup up, up a bunch that are in the downtown area um, but that may be kind of far for folks on this call um, but the parking ban is supposed to go into effect tonight at midnight and last until 3 p.m tomorrow um, I just saw that um, New Haven Public Schools has canceled school for tomorrow so um I believe the lots will be open and accessible until seven o'clock p.m. Um, so I'll put that in the chat. Um, otherwise, I um, I know that Fairhaven is doing an amazing job with getting tests out. I saw there was an article in the Independent um, about the work that my colleague on the board, Alder Miller, um, and the Fairhaven Community Health Team have been doing to get folks rapid tests. There was a drive through today um, and I spent some of the afternoon um, going around to folks in Ward 8 um, giving it tests, but thanks so much for all that you are all doing, staying masked, making sure that you're socially distant, washing your hands, getting vaccinated and boosted on tests of where you can. Um, we had our first, uh, it's bunkers that, this is the first week that we had the board. It's the first meeting of the board was on Monday of this week. Um, we're gonna meet again on the 18th um, in observance of, or after the observance of MLK Junior Day. Um, but I'm gonna put all my contact info in the chat. Um, if you need anything, reach out. Um, and happy to be here as always, thanks. Well, I should have said happy new year at the beginning. So happy new year to you. Thank you for your report. And I'll just quickly remind people that there is a section of Fairhaven in the south, um, uh, south uh, west side that is uh, a district, uh, a part of uh, uh, Ward 8 uh, under uh, Ellen. So uh, if you live in that area around the John Martinez School and out almost to the health center on Grand Avenue, you are in, uh, in Ellen's ward, okay? Um, I don't see uh, Charles Decker or Anna Festa. Uh, Alder Miller, do you have anything you'd like to share with us? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, 
Thank you, Alder Kupo, for that. And um, I am brand new on the board of Alders. I think, what is today, the sixth? So it's my sixth day. Um, so I don't have a ton to report. I'm learning the ropes, but I, I do just want to mention that I know there's been a longstanding effort to sort of coordinate with the Fairhaven Alders more consistent uh, reporting here. And so give us a little time, but we'll try to make that happen so that there is, you know, maybe just one report every time from one of the alders that represents Fairhaven. There are six of us. It also occurs to me that it might be helpful at some point to just provide an overview of how the board of alders works, um, what the committees are, what the commissions are, how you can provide input to all these bodies. There's some things that I learned as part of onboarding that I didn't know even as somebody who's you know paid pretty close attention to these things. So if that's of interest, we could um, we could do that in the future. Um, I also have an email list um, and we'll put out a newsletter. I can put in the chat how to subscribe. Um, a few just other things that haven't come up elsewhere on the agenda, Darlene and others have mentioned the COVID distribution. I've heard that that's gonna happen again. So if you didn't get a test today and as, as um, Dr. Lagarde mentioned there may also be some test kits coming from Fairhaven Community Health Center. So whatever I learn on either of those fronts, I'll put out to my list. Um, you're welcome to subscribe whether you live in 14 or not. Uh, let's see. Um, there's also other testing sites around the city. So some PCR, some saliva, and those, I think they're mostly closed tomorrow, but there will continue to be, those will continue to be available. Um, Kathleen mentioned the Grand Avenue Bridge opening January 15th from 12 to two. So just a few notes about that. There'll be kind of the ceremonial opening, some music. There'll also be a resource table. So for any agencies on the call, if you wanna bring flyers or other materials from your agencies, you can bring them and contribute them there. And then at the end, there's gonna be a walk the, walk the bridge loop, which a lot of us used to do all the time and haven't been able to do for 18 months. So it'd be nice to, um, to be able to do that again. Also the Strong School um, project. So there were a series of public meetings. The most recent one was in December with the consultants who were hired to help us um, just think through scenarios for redevelopment of the former Strong School on Grand Avenue. Um, so that sort of public input process had a few different meetings that were part of it and has come to a close. And the next stage will be for the city to issue a, a, um, an RFP to developers, which will be responding to the criteria that came out of that process. Um, so that hasn't happened yet. I think it was supposed to get rolling this week and everybody's delayed because of the COVID um, craziness, but that should be coming very soon. Um, let's see. The other thing I wanted to mention is property revaluations. I know a bunch of us opened our mail in December and got sticker shock around the property revals. Um, so I just want to put a link to the process in the chat. If you want to contest your property, if you think you that the property revaluations for homeowners might be too high, um, you can contest it. And this is an overview of the process. Uh, let's see what else is on my list. Um, oh, the other thing I just think is helpful is th there's, there's a new state law that provides for paid family medical leave in Connecticut, which a lot of people don't know about. So I'll just put a link to that in the chat as well so that um, people can look into it if it might be applicable to you. I have, happy to take any questions and just good to be here with all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't see Alder Santiago or Alder. Oh, I, I just wanted to uh, personally, uh, Representative or Alder Miller had a lot of points that she was going to put in the chat. Uh, definitely send that uh, email list link uh, as well because I, I'm nowhere near Alder Cupo's uh, district anymore, but I get half my kind of stuff from the city from her list. So I'm, I'm excited to have kind of a more Fairhaven centric as well. So, yeah. Okay, if I just put them in where it says subscribe, it will say New Haven uh, DTC Ward 20, uh, Ford 14, but it is my list. I just can't figure out how to change it, so. So that is in, uh, in process. And uh, again, any questions for either of the alders? Uh, that are with us. Uh, thank you both of you for attending and 
and we hope to see you and your colleagues at future meetings on some schedule that will make it easier for all of you and, uh, and also keep us uh, informed. So with that, um, uh, I, I have an announcement I'd like to make. I'm gonna just open it quickly to any very brief announcements that people have. I'm very uh, excited. Uh, I don't know all the details, but there is a restaurant that's fairly well known from State Street called The Tavern, and they will be opening up a branch, a subsidiary, whatever it's called, over at the marina. There was an article about this in the New Haven Independent. If anyone has a, a link to the article, you want to put it in the uh, chat, please feel free to do that. It was just in uh, yesterday or the day before. So that will bring jobs to our neighborhood and a, a restaurant with a, a, a very well-known chef will be right there at the marina. Uh, that said, uh, is there anyone else that has a very brief announcement about any uh, activity or event uh, that has not been mentioned? Lee, just one question. Yep. Are they Go opening ahead. where the other restaurant was? The, um, exactly. what's the name? Exactly. The smokehouse? Where, where, where the smokehouse was, that's going to oh, be. Oh, good. Yeah, that, they will be. Do you in know, there. Do you know when? Yeah, it's supposedly soon, but like within the next hmm. few weeks to a month. Um, oh, good. So yeah, it'll, it'll be before the, you know, the summer sets in. And if all goes as Good. planned, we hope to bring Riverfest back at that location yeah. in May. In we haven't done it in the last couple of years. Yeah. And there'll be a really great restaurant there. Any That's other... good because we need we need a restaurant there. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, Abby was kind enough to put the link from the register. That's as much information as, uh, as I have on that. Um, uh, again, uh, any questions or comments? Uh, this is also a great opportunity. If you have any suggestions for how we can make these meetings better for you personally or for the people that you represent, please put them in the chat. You can send them to everyone. You can send them directly to us. Remember, we do have fairhavencmt at gmail.com as our email address that is checked regularly by Abby, our correspondence secretary, who very quickly put it right in the chat. So uh, speak to us now and uh, uh, or speak to us later. You don't have to hold your peace. Okay, so it looks like we are done. Uh, oh, I see uh, a quick announcement here. It is Cervical Cancer Prevention Month. There's a phone number in the chat uh, to get a free pap smear. So that was put in by Monique. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, I would like to hear a motion for um, ending our meeting. So moved. Uh, moved by Darlene. Uh, that does not have to be seconded. Uh, we thank you very much and have a very, very good night. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.